Hello everyone, welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3's Classic Companion Series, and I am pleased to announce that this is the very last, well, original exclusive character for Baldur's Gate 2! Hooray! Um, there are a handful more that I have left to do. Uh, of course, the Enhanced Edition bunch. Uh, Bayloth, Nira, Rasad, Dorn, Nell come later. Um... And then there's a couple more that I'm not going to do right away, but maybe sometime down the road. And even one of them is kind of an if. There's also Wilson the Bear that some people might be aware of. You can have an actual bear for a companion in Baldur's Gate 2. Uh, well, that's not really possible in this game right now. Certainly not in the base game. I think there are ways you can make more bestial races with mods, but I'm going to wait until after... Patch 7 comes out when mod support becomes official. And I'm going to do that same thing with Hexat as well. Because she is a vampire and that technically does not fall in with any of the races. However, when I was rolling with mods a while back, I noticed that uh, someone put together a race that incorporated the Dampier from Pathfinder. And I thought to myself, well, Dampiers aren't 100% vampires, but that's actually a pretty good uh, starting point for that. So... Those will come down the line, but for now, let's go ahead and focus on Yoshimo, a very plot-centric character. Male human bounty hunter rogue. Awesome some things to say about the bounty hunter later, but for now, he also has a... He has true neutral alignment. Um, and he's the only companion you find outside of Minsk, Jahara, and Imowen and all them in the opening dungeon. In fact, he um, pops in. I mean, he, if you do the dungeon right, you make your way towards the end. You're going to run into him, no problem. So I'm not going to worry about uh, a visual reference. But um, what I can say for certain is that he does have a maxed out fight and traps, which is definitely something worth having in your party. <laughs> so he'll be one of those rogues that's actually really dependable, despite the fact that, well... He's a thief, and you know, you know what they all say about thieves in the Baldur's, the classic Baldur's Gate games. His open locks isn't quite up to 100, but unlike Nalia, you can actually improve it without having to rely on potions, so there you go. Um, one special thing about him, though, is that he is able to dual class to fighter, and considering how difficult it is to get a, a thief going in, you know, classic Baldur skate games it's actually you know it's something i didn't try before but it might be worth looking into honestly um what's also uh worth noting is that his move silently and hide and shadows skills which are interchangeable have actually been nerfed in the enhanced edition in fact in the classic game his move silently was literally maxed out as well so say goodbye to those cheap stealth kills with <laughs> working on it first um Now, he is uh, level 10, though, so the one bad thing about dual-classing him is that you'll have to... you will be kind of pigeonholed into doing it as early as possible, um, lest, you know... Because he'll have his fighter levels, will have to exceed his bounty hunter levels in order to get the skills back, which is just stupid. I don't know who thought of that stupid rule. But anyway, um, in any case... As I said earlier, he can be recruited in Chapter 1. He, he claims that he's an escaping prisoner just like you. But as anybody who's played the game knows, that's unfortunately not very true. Um, his only relationship is with Nalia, whom he views himself as a tutor over for her skills. And aside from Hexat, he is the only pure non-dual class thief in, in the game. And until Hexat came out in the Enhanced Edition days, he was the only pure class thief choice you had until you, you lost him after a certain point, and then M1 came back. So it's kind of nice to see that the evil characters get a thief that their party can much more reliably relate to. I mean, I don't think there are even any pure class evil thieves in the first game. Why did you, well, I don't know why I didn't think about that until now. But regardless, um, the only other thing worth noting about this guy is his 
uh, biography. When asked about his past, Yoshimo seems disheartened that you are not already acquainted with his reputation. By his own account, he is apparently well known among people in the know, both as a daring rogue and as a dashing man about town. While the story sounds impressive, he seems ungainly for such exploits, possibly a bit more hapless than Debonair. He wears it well, however, and perhaps even capitalizes on it. He seems to know that his kind of good-natured humor is well appreciated by most everyone he meets. I know one of his, uh... One of my favorite quotes of his, particularly... It's one of those quotes you get when you click on him a whole bunch. But when he does a typical hi ya like, you know, some kung fu film. And then right afterwards, he says, The tourists love that. <laughs> I'm just like, wow. <laughs> Poking fun at the martial arts films. I love it. Um, that being said, though, he does have a legitimate Asian appearance. And that's because he's actually from the region of Karatur. I think I pronounced that right. Which is essentially the Asian uh, land in the Forgotten Realm settings, of course. So, and that's something of note. And then as far as his class, the bounty hunter, I mean, considering the fact that he likes to make himself sound more talented than he is, I'm surprised they didn't go with Swashbuckler. And I really wish they did, because Swashbuckler, you can I, I mean, it's not the greatest uh, thief class, but you can at least, you know... Uh, get some abilities that kind of make you sort of a pseudo-fighter, so you can sort of hold your own uh, more up front. You won't have any backstab, but that's not a huge issue. The problem, however, is that he uh, got the bounty hunter class. Hit, I should say. And see, you know, all of the thieves in Baldur's Gate, the classic games, are able to lay down traps. The bounty hunter gets... Um, these uh, exclusive traps that are particularly more powerful. Now, that sounds all well and good, but it ain't. I'm going to tell you why. First off, you can get through the entirety of Baldur's Gate 2 without setting a single goddamn trap. The original game, anyway. Um, Throne of Ball is a fair bit more difficult. But even then, with Throne of Ball... When you get to your uh, high-level abilities, you can get an ability called Set Spike Trap that rogues can use. That is just abominably more powerful than anything even the uh, Bounty Hunter has to offer. And hell, if you choose to be a bard, not only do you still get that trap, but you can use it as though you had a hunter perfect. You would max out the Set Trap skill. And hell, not only that, but his Set Traps is at only a 35. I mean, you have a chance to fail setting traps from the Bounty Hunter class. But what's really frustrating about the Bounty Hunter hit in uh, the classic games is that you couldn't even set the traps without, you know, without any enemies being around. And to be fair, like, if any enemy is in your visual line of sight, they'll usually come right after you. Which means you gotta use your stealth abilities to, you know, scope out the place. Which is all well and good, I suppose, but even then, you know, it'll take time for you to set those traps. And you have to be at a really high level just to set them consistently. And then, of course, you gotta lure the enemies in with the traps and all that stuff. So yeah, it's a bit of an elongated playstyle that I think really doesn't offer anything outside of when I feel it really needs to be used in the game. So I kind of feel like Yoshimo is just one of those companions that you have literally because you need him. And even then, the sad thing about it is you don't even really need him in the story. I mean, if you take him all the way up to Spellhold, his betrayal will be revealed, and then, of course, you'll have to fight him afterwards. And then, of course, after he dies, you can take his heart to a uh, cleric where it can be redeemed of its sins. Well, you can go to Spellhold without the guy. Like, at all. And if you go through Spellhold, you come back to Baldur's Gate, and you see him again, he'll just die instantly. So it's like, oh, okay, that was great. <laughs> so, yeah. So there, unfortunately, isn't a whole lot else to Yoshimo beyond that. But I do at least appreciate the effort of giving us a very reliable thief character that is at least different from Mo, and it kind of, you know, lets us see a little bit more what interesting characters are out there. Um... With that being said, though, let's go ahead and talk about how I view the character in Baldur's Gate 3. 
Plus Morton, race human, class rogue, of course. And I would definitely pick the... Well, yeah, I don't know, you know? I'm kind of wavering between thief and assassin with this one. I mean, he definitely has a personality that, you know, goes more of a carefree thief that can, you know, uh, move about quickly. He, he claims he can dance on the head of a pin as well, so... <laughs> On that note, however, when he, you know, jumped in with uh, Irenicus to kill you, I mean, he was obviously part of a, a group of assassins that would, uh, you know... <clears throat> well, I shouldn't say obviously, but when you did fight him, he had a team of assassins with him, which kind of makes me think, yeah, I, th I think he could be assassin there as well. You know, it's, it's just all in how you want to view the guy. He's true neutral. He's more of a comical, easygoing sort. And when he does reveal his betrayal, he's not exactly, you know, happy about it. But, uh, you know. So, with that note, though, I do kind of feel like the criminal background suits him best. Um, charlatan's a maybe, but he doesn't really seem to me as a sort of super charismatic type. In fact, I relate to him the criminal background because of the fact that he works for the Shadow Thieves. And when you first go to the docks to meet the Shadow Thieves, he kind of tells you to meet them more out of necessity than out of any sort of manipulation. So, and hey, it's not like the Shadow Thieves aren't helpful allies anyway. And then in terms of his abilities, which, by the way, in the old game were a strength of 17, a dexterity of 18, a constitution of 16... An intelligence of 13, a wisdom of 10, and a charisma of 14. I kind of decided to just go ahead and focus on his uh, physical capabilities to start with. Um, as I'm kind of with, as I kind of understand when that people say, you know, the arcane tricks are all that great of a class. I didn't worry too much about his intelligence being high and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so, and then after that, we have his appearance. Which, um, I went ahead and picked the one Asian-looking guy in the game for, which... Oh, he did... His lips are way too red, in my opinion. But aside from that, you know, it still works pretty well. And then, um, for his hairstyle, I came up with this, uh, little thing here. Um, he's definitely got longest hair that goes down to his shoulders. Um, a little bit past here, but it's not too different, really. And then, of course, this is a high, uh, high off, uh, how, how, how do you say it? Um, this high brow or hairstyle, like, I guess I could, I could find, it's not quite as up there as, uh, the original portrait is, but, you know. And, hey, nothing else, he's got a nice little ponytail in the back, I think that definitely suits him. <laughs> so, with that being said, that was Yoshimo, and that is, of course, the end of the... Uh, original Baldur's Gate 2 characters for now. Uh, later down the line, I will do um, the four big enhanced edition characters that were added into the game. Baloth, Dorn, Nira, and Rasad. So keep an eye out for those. And if there's any of those that you'd like to see earlier than the others, let me know and I will make sure that they you know, get for to nine. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you guys so much for you know joining me on this series. And thank you to all of the people who have um, sent in their uh, comments and recommendations so far, as well as those who have kind of helped me <laughs> get a few uh, mi uh, mistakes clarified. Thank you guys so much for all of your help, and I'm so glad you've all enjoyed this so far. Uh, in the meantime, though, that's going to be it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves, and farewell.